first of all thank you everyone for taking your time and uh, good afternoon i hope you all are having a great open source summit so far i'm gokul prabaharan i'm joined with my colleague uh, nagesh we both are from card loyalty organization in capital one we are here to discuss about our topic of uh, unleashing agility crafting of the shelf components using serverless here is the agenda we are planning to cover today a quick introduction about ourselves then about uh, capital loan open source summit being a pioneer open source platform right across the country i would be off remiss if i am not really hitting what open source means to capital loan then we will discuss on why agility matters in today's tech context then we will reveal what calls is providing details of cards as well as what are the benefits of cards we have seen then we will set the stage with more additional context on the loyalty program what we offer and how that platform has really transitioned from monoliths to cards which is what primarily how we are operating now finally we will uh, discuss on commonly faced challenges and how they can overcome those leaving some room for q and a at the end so saying i'm gokul prabaharan software engineering manager at capital one I have been speaking in various uh, open source related conferences across the country primarily in the area of uh, big data as well as uh, no sql mainly focusing on cassandra and i contribute to capital one tech blog as well in the same area i have provided my social handles uh, and join with my colleague hey uh, myself nagesh kumar vinakota senior manager uh, software engineer at capital one i've uh, been a tech speaker and a blogger as well and you can find my uh, handles uh, there awesome some details about capital one Capital One is the first U.S. bank to exit out of legacy on-premise data center and go all in cloud. We have made a public declaration in 2015, and we have achieved this in 2020. One can imagine for any of the existing company to achieve such a feat, like how much of the investment they require. And that's why now we are a tech company which happens to be in a banking business, and till date we are. a founder at company which focuses on its core value of change banking for good we give back to community in various forms to start off we run a program called coders which is primarily an across the country for middle school students which gives them a platform for them to really tinker and and then develop applications so that they can really envision a career in tech in their future and also we run a program called coda which provides the pathway for non tech folks to get into tech we empower them with all the tools and everything what they need for them to really become very successful in their tech career right why we are here most of uh, us are anyway like in there are ways which we are really associated with open source and that's the same for capital loan too uh, capital loan has really kick started similar to their tech transformation right they uh, got associated with the uh, open source primarily during their uh, tech transformation and they formed their open source program office in 2015 and since then we have really accelerated our adoption as well as contribution to open source projects now we primarily develop most of our software with the principle of open source first we being a company which operates in a highly regulated industry which has actually provided a lot of rich insights for us to embed those insights into our software development life cycle and that was really is paving us way organically to contribute back to our open source community and that's what we have open sourced many of those things whatever we have gained from our experience 
of operating in regulated industry as open source projects. We have more than 25 projects, to name few, which cuts across many domains, like Kubernetes, cloud control, YAML, data. Like specifically, when it comes to the cloud control, we have open sourced cloud custodian, which is pretty popular, where you can establish rules for most of your cloud operations. And Rubicon, Data Compi, and Data Profiler, those are all the open source projects which place in the space of ML and data. And Critical Stack, which is a hardened security focused Kubernetes offering, which is open source by us, which is also very popular. Not only that, Capital One really believes in contributing back to community, and that's also the main reason we sponsor various foundations, like Python Foundation, Cloud Native Computing Foundation, Linux Foundation, who runs this program, and also Open SSF, to name few, mainly to help our community sustainable across. And that's also one of the reason where we sponsor those. I have provided our public GitHub page where you can check out all our open source projects, whatever we discussed. All right. To kickstart, we are going to really discuss why agility matters. That will set the stage for our next thing which we are going to discuss, which is cards. Traditional architectures like Monolith, which existed decades ago, face significant challenge when it comes to the tech landscape order which exists now after many evolution. We will discuss on few of those. To start with, limited scalability. What I mean by limited scalability? It limited scalability in, in the context of uh, uh, monolith face issues with both vertical as well as horizontal scalability. When it comes to a vertical, we have to increase the capacity of those existing application infra, there it could be hitting its practical physical limits and it could be costly too. On the other hand, horizontal scalability, where we have to put all these workloads across the machines as a distributed workload, could be challenging when it comes to any existing old uh, tech architectures like monolith, right? where those things, due to its tight coupling, and uh, interdependencies, we couldn't put them as our distributed workload. High maintenance cost. What I mean by high maintenance cost is this existing architectures where they are mostly deployed as single unit of compute requires us to have extensive testing as well as various processes in place that can really push their operational cost. So if you are making a change, this is not something uh, uh, unique, right? You are probably aware of this. You make a change in uh, one area of the application which could have uh, unforeseen problems in the other area of uh, application. This will really push us to have even extensive testing and that's what really increases their maintenance. Fragility. What fragility in the context of uh, monolith application, right? Because they have tight coupling and you make the change and those changes could really bring down that particular area, not only that, right? It can have a cascading effect on the whole system altogether, and that is what fragility in this context, because it can bring down your whole system altogether because of the coupling which exists. Flexibility. Since those existing uh, architectures offer less flexibility when it comes to shipping the features, particularly only that alone, right? Because we were not practicing mostly agile methodology, those things, where we ship that particular feature to the market, that is what pushes the developer because 
we do not have that kind of flexibility when it comes to this architecture where everything is deployed as one single unit and those things in turn will have a impact to the organization itself because you may not be able to stay competitive and get all your features whatever we envision in front of your customers that could not have a real impact to the company itself. Those are all the challenges with existing ones and that is where we, the agility matters, moving fast and that is where we are really uh, to discuss more on our topic of interest which is COTS. Can any of you get what is COTS? Yeah, we are not here to discuss about commercial of the shelf. So what we are going to focus on in, in our context here is components of the shelf. Components of the shelf are the predefined software which are readily available for the application teams within their organization for them to consume and build their business functionality. Traditionally the existing whatever we previously saw, the commercial of the shelf mostly those are all closed architecture, vertically focused or maybe domain focused, that is how they were operating most on closed. On the other end what we wanted to focus more in this is components of the shelf which is open and available for contribution within their organization internally and that is what really empowers the COTS ideology whatever we are following. We will discuss what are the benefits COTS provides. Accelerated development, since this COTS whatever we are discussing that is available for any application team to pick it and build on top of which means you are not building the same, you do not need to and that in turn will accelerate whatever we want to ship because you can focus on your business and ship that functionality to the production. Same in the other way you are not good, the development team which owns the application are not going to incur any operational cost, development cost which will reduce really their cost when it comes to cuts. Risk mitigation. Mostly the cards are centrally developed and managed for the organization. So which means we are not going to develop any redundant code for that specific feature. So that in turn will reduce your risk exposure because there is not redundant code. This cards is pretty much hardened, maintained centrally by the team. So that way it reduces your risk of whatever the code we have. Access to specialist expertise. So as previously mentioning, cards are generally in our case too, which is centrally managed, which is hardened and they take care of most of those. What that really provides is though for those folks to really have interaction with the folks across the organization. So they really see various use cases and how it is getting used, cards. At the same time, what are all the benefits others are seeing, right? So that provides the opportunity for the folks who are really getting started in using the cards and they will, they can really benefit from the knowledge which we have gained from establishing this as the core principle how we operate. So that is what the specialist knowledge is. So they can share what they have seen from others to the folks who are really getting started. So with this context of what we are mainly discussing about cards as well as what are the benefits it provides, my colleague Nagesh will walk us through how we have really implemented cards in our organization. Right. Thanks Gokul. Um, before we move forward and delve deeper into this presentation, uh, how many of you are here from Seattle? Okay. Um, 
and hope you all are having like uh, valuable insights from this Open Source Summit conference. Uh, I have a couple of questions, like how many of you are here having a credit card? Well, let me be more generic, uh, specific. How many of you are here are having a Capital One credit card? Okay. Uh, and can anyone say what drives most of us for signing up for a new credit card? Okay. Credit limit. What else? Rewards. Rewards. Yes. There you go. So loyalty benefits. According to JD Power, approximately 60% of US customers, not only US customers, anywhere across the world, sign up for a new credit card based on the loyalty benefits provided to the customer. So Capital One offers a wide range of credit cards to the customers today. Uh, I'll take like, you know, VentureX is one such popular card for the frequent travelers. It offers like, you know, 2% miles on all purchases and 5X miles on all flight reservations and 10X miles on all uh, hotel reservations booked through Capital One Travel Portal today. So in general, uh, Yeah, like when you swipe your card, we receive all such transactions every day. We process all those transactions. We calculate those points and credit back those points to the customer accounts. This is where like, you know, so once the points are credited, they can use it. In general, like in any banking application or any kind of organization, like, you know, system. So what does a loyalty system is all about? So loyalty can have, in general, like, you know, five stages. Accumulation, which we discussed about it. And once the points has been accumulated, we should also give a platform for the customers to redeem those points. It could be in the form of gift cards, or in this context, they can even transfer these points to the partnered airline systems where they can buy flight reservations or any such things. And in case they want, they can even cash those miles uh, for, few, for other, further use cases. So we give a platform for the customers to redeem those points. So before we redeem, like, you know, we generally do any kind of checks, like, you know, hey, does this customer has enough points or all that stuff? Like, all the eligibility checks will take care in that process. Then, actually we'll debit the, debit the points from the customer accounts. And the fulfillment stage, in the case of gift cards, for example, like, you know, the actual physical card has to ship to the customer's address. So once it's shipped to the customer address, the actual fulfillment process is complete. This is like a generic a loyalty program, how it operates today. So before, like, uh, like any other organization, like over a decade ago, Capital One is operating on an on-prem servers, having like huge monolith applications. Like let's take this example, like feature A is about like redeeming a gift card and feature B is like transferring miles to a loyalty, external loyalty programs. And transfer C is like about like, you know, feature C is like about, about like, you know, and caching those miles uh, in the form of, uh, you know, cash. So, Take that, like, you know, as I said earlier, all these features should have an eligibility process in place, a redemption capability should be in place, and fulfillment process in case if it is required, and a notification system just to uh, send a notification about that particular stage of that uh, uh, process. All these applications are, like, you know, uh, are tightly coupled over a, a decade ago, and we are running on on-prem servers. As Gokul pointed out in this previous slides, and I know we have gone through a series of issues, challenges, like, you know, it's less agile, like, you know, uh, and we were not able to deliver the components much faster. All these are like some of the uh, issues we have gone through it in this journey. This is where we quickly learned about it and we started our transformation journey into uh, cloud. So while we are transforming, uh, transitioning into the cloud, we also started 
going back to the backboard and see how we can create more modularized systems. Maybe I can go there. So if you see now uh, the pre similar example, like, you know, uh, let's say feature A has its own eligibility uh, and redemption functionality and notification system. Similarly, uh, miles transfer, transferring miles to the external parties also has its own eligibility likewise and, and caching the miles has its own eligibility process. Although this is uh, much better than the monolith systems, we have quickly learned that like, okay, these systems has its own, uh, you know, problems like, you know, operational overhead or like, you know, uh, increased complexity or resource overhead, all such kind of things we have noticed up front. And then we quickly tra uh, started transforming our journey towards COTS. So in this example, if you see here now, COTS is like components of the shelf has its own generic eligibility process, redemption process and notification system. Now the features as Gokul mentioned earlier, uh, we were able to connect the features uh, uh, as a plugin, plugin architecture kind of it. Like this has given us enhanced reusability where the components are readily available for us to integrate and uh, simplified the development process because developers now can directly integrate uh, the components rather than developing it from the scratch and also like you know reduced maintenance overhead because all the function most 80% of the functionality is common in the uh, group together into a single component and all those things are being reusable now. And it also saved cost and also like, you know, giving the ability for the uh, consumers to just to focus on the core business logic rather than, um, you know, doing it from the scratch. So with this, like, you know, uh, we'll talk about a small portion of like, you know, how we are handling the costs today. So in this example, let's say, uh, gift cards is like a consumer of it, like Lambda A is uh, a consumer, and the reusable Lambda is uh, like the eligibility process, for example. So in this example, if you see, irrespective of the language agnostic or anything, the Lambda can be written in, in any language, but the reusable Lambda and all, all these things are having asynchronous systems in place, making sure that the, all the messages are consumed through queues or streams, and uh, you know any lambda like lambda z or lambda y can also in this case like any feature can be directly putting those messages to the uh, reusable lambdas so in case if the cots is also extended to support other functionalities it can also talk to other rest apis and uh, process all those messages and send it to uh, reusable lambda c in case if it, in this case after the eligibility process this can even send to the fulfillment processors and notification systems. If something goes south in one of these applications, it can send those messages uh, to the dead letter queue, for example, to re reprocess those messages and send the notifications as well to the customers. So the dead letter queue here, like, you know, A, B, C, for example, uh, to make it clear, like, you know, if the message A is not processed, it can go and post that message to the corresponding Lambda to make sure that all the messages are processed and serving the customers. So I'm not going into the implementation part of it, like we have used several design patterns and all that stuff. In summary, so define the scope of your application, like if 80% of your application has the commonality, identify all the scope uh, of your application and uh, you know that that's where like you know your cards is more uh, applicable once once i identify once we define the purpose of your application then you set the uh, scope of your application by defining the boundaries and the responsibilities which includes uh, intended features and all that stuff and then then it's all about like defining the interfaces like you know how to specify all the interfaces like uh, how the cards can interact with all the consumers of your applications. And then the data management, like, you know, it's about like how you, how the data will be uh, flown in and out of your application. Observable, observability is another important aspect when you are designing your cards, making sure that, you know, all the logs are being emitted so that like you know, all the consumers are fully aware of it. So with this, uh, all right. 
So why don't we uh, play good cup, bad cup, Nagesh? Sure. I heard cards uh, doesn't integrate seamlessly with uh, any existing system. Is that true? No, uh, I think it's the consumer's responsibility to conduct thorough uh, um, compatibility testing. I would say due diligence is very much important. So to understand the boundaries of the application, like, you know, uh, so like, let's say when you are a consumer of a COTS application, if you have a specific TPS or response times, it's always responsible to understand that you do the thorough, thorough compatibility testing first and making sure that the COTS is a, uh, a feasible solution to integrate. Do we need to tailor the existing application for any new business needs if we have to really integrate with cards? No, it is it's again like you know uh, in this in the previous example we discussed about it like you know uh, the eligibility process. Let's take that as an example. So. It is not necessary that like, you know, the eligibility, you should have an eligibility process across every application, every feature that you have it today, right? Like uh, COT should always be like an iterative process. Like, you know, when you design your application, when you consider that this is a specific COTS application, from the product point of view, it should be like a capability of the shelf. You need to think that like, you know, what's the business boundaries of this application? And COTS application should always op be open for extensions. Because as we evolve, it can carry more scenarios and start, you know, supporting more customer base or more users in, in, in future. Good. So if you, if you are like making it more commercial, then it is, it has a limited boundaries, but this is more like an open source, think it like an open source within an organization. So where everybody can contribute with their own use cases. So your COTS application should be always open for extensions, like make it like follow like a solid principles, like, you know, when you are uh, following any design principles. All right. I have been uh, really saying about good things for COTS. Now I'm wearing a different Yeah, coat. absolutely. So if we are, uh, really leveraging cards, wouldn't uh, the application team be more reliant on uh, the cards team? Yes, so we initially we had this uh, problem as well, like, you know, we do have the clear documentation in place, but there was like uh, a proper, uh, we, we started making it even more like, you know, uh, creating by uh, more SLAs and the documentation, the user guidelines, making, creating the awareness uh, uh, to within the organization, like you know, so that they can start using the uh, COTS functionality uh, in their applications. So it's always recommended that uh, you know every time you create a, uh, you have a COTS application, any new functionality is added. You clearly set the boundaries of the application so that like when somebody is doing a compatibility testing, they can clearly look into what they want. And it is also a, uh, an opportunity for the up team who is actually maintaining the cards so that they can improve their application as well. I know we discussed more on the monolith, having some scalability challenge, limited flexibility, those sort of things. From the explanation, it looks like if the application's team is consuming cards, wouldn't cards become a single point of failure like monolith? So I think if you are designing any application in respect of records, so uh, the responsibility uh, is like design a system which is highly resilient and fault tolerant, making sure that your application is already always available. If you go back to the previous uh, uh, slide, like in about the architecture part which we discussed, so the application is fully asynchronous. So making sure that, you know, it is, consuming the messages in case if the application goes south, the COTS application is not available, it can still, the messages are still be in the, in the queue. So in such cases, you know, when the COTS application is available again, it can process the messages. I'm not saying that like, you know, you, you know the application will be down. So you'll always design no a system which is already active, active, uh, like, you know, all the design strategies that you will follow to make sure that the application is always available. However, if something goes south and the application is still down, you should, create a system in such a way that it can notify all the consumers and also ensure that it is processing all the messages. So make sure that your application is highly resilient and fault tolerant when you're designing COTS application. Right. So I think in summary, like, you know, uh, 
it, it's about the, it's, it's an organization uh, perspective, like how you are identifying a system, like, you know, how you are making your application as a, a cost. The basic advantage here we have it like, you know, focus on your core business logic while, you know, we have a common logic in place at the cards. Cards has its own boundaries uh, and it should, it should be designed in such a way that it can, you know, evolve uh, day to day. And, uh, you know, as we said, like we have, see, we have reaped a lot of benefits of uh, having cards and we can save huge cost for the organizations by having, uh, you know, cards. Like, you know, in, ca in case, you, in, in fact, like you can federate your components within the organization to other uh, teams so that they can start integrating their pieces in as well. So reduced maintenance overhead, we all knew that like, you know, uh, if we decouple our system at a too deeper, like, you know, it can end up having like too many micro nano services. Then, then it is very hard to fix any vulnerabilities or anything. It's purely like a uh, operational overhead and maintenance overhead. So always uh, design your systems in such a, such a way that like, you know, group it all the commonality and uh, start evolving that functionality so that you can reduce the maintenance overhead. And applications must be scalable to support the large volumes. If you're integrating with any new consumer in future, it should, ex it should like seamlessly uh, support the scalability. So design your system in such a way that it is always available uh, for, uh, for all your customers. Interoperability, like it is mostly like, you know, how we, our application is kind of communicating. Basically, the COTS application is communicating uh, with all the consumers, making sure that uh, the response times are all, always meeting the SLAs so that your application, your COTS uh, is not the reason uh, for the actual delays of, uh, res uh, for the responses. Reliability and, uh, you know, having the risk mitigation strategies as Google called out earlier, it will reduce the uh, risk posture, like, you know, so that you can focus only on the scope of your application while the courts will take care of the common responsibility of handling your core process logic. Finally, make sure that you are having um, proper support and training documentation so that whoever is accessing, um, they have all the uh, uh, information before they're integrating their applications to the courts. Uh, I have the limited scope, like I was explaining all the cards, but it's it's purely like, you know, the guidelines is like up to you, like how you can define the boundaries of your application uh, and, uh, you know, more migrate towards more of the cards. I think uh, with that, like, uh, we are open for any question and uh, answers. Thank you, everyone. Okay, well, watching everyone. Great question. Uh, as 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 I discussed earlier, like let's let's take one simpler similar simple example where you got a transaction, and this transaction has to process at several stages. In this case, uh, you can have the, all the application logic in your own system, like like a monolith system, where the transaction is flowing within the system, or the transaction like all the transactions are flowing in the, within the system or the transaction, the independent transaction is flowing within its own independent component. In this case, if you are building your application more asynchronous, you, you can run any data, data analytics, or you can make sure that your application is queued, your transaction is queued, and you can uh, uh, kind of like set the throttle to make sure that all the messages are synchronously being processed in the asynchronous system. So you mean the transaction in uh, ACID context or, uh, right? So I think mo few of these are uh, stateless, right? Only few of these are really having the stateful, right? Not all the lambdas, whatever we have, they're all having some stateful connection. Few of them are stateless. So but what Nagesh was explaining was more like the, the real customer transaction flowing through the system.